Look, I'm not going to sit here and paper over any cracks. Yesterday's performance was really poor. And I didn't know whether to use the phrase or not, but I'm going to say Moyes-esque uh, because I think it holds some weight in the sense of yesterday was, especially in that first half, it reminded me um, of sometimes the torture that we uh, had to sit through uh, last season. And to Lopetegui's credit, and I'm going to say it just for the balance, he changed it and it got a little bit better. We had a spell, 15 or 20 minutes in that second half, where we generated a couple of chances and we put Fulham under a bit of pressure. Then that sort of petered out and then Ing scored, uh, if that makes sense, right uh, in the nick of time for the Hammers. But we've got to give Lopetegui some time. That's what I've put in the title of this video. And I think, um, you know, that's my opinion. And hopefully that's going to ring true. And hopefully um, over the next couple of months, we begin to see Lopetegui understanding his best team and understanding what works. Welcome back to West Ham Official. I thought it was um, good and important to come on and have a little bit of a chat, reflecting on yesterday, not just the sort of initial wow, Danny Ings, he scored, we got a point. Let's talk about everything and um, and how that's going to impact the Hammers going forward. So drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll get straight on in with it. He dropped Paqueta. That was the main thing in the concourse and outside the ground before. Paqueta's dropped. Wow, who did you put in? Suchek. And there was a... Oh, from the fan base to see Thomas Suchek back in West Ham's midfield uh, once again. There was calls for Paqueta to be dropped, absolutely, and I understood people saying it, but I don't think people um, were wanting and desiring for Suchek to replace him. We ended up with a completely paceless midfield, and I hoped Lopetegui would see that and not do it, but he did do it and it didn't work. But he acknowledged it and he changed it at half-time. We were really poor in that first half. Uh, there was no attacking intent. Defensively, we were sloppy. Uh, I've praised Kilman, but I thought a couple of times he got caught out alongside Mavropanos. He as well got caught out a couple of times, but that probably came from the midfield not being as strong as it has been. And they had some really good um, attacking pacey wingers. Iwobi um, on one side. Uh, I'm not Wan-Bissaka. Iwobi on one side, and then you had a Traore on the other. Uh, and Wan-Bissaka was uh, just staying a little bit narrow. And, um, you know, he had the run on him every single time. And Emerson the same on the other side where uh, they were getting a free run into the box and causing us some problems. And it was only a matter of time before Raul Jimenez got his head on one, and he did, and it was 1-0 to Fulham. Also a notable mention to Emil Smith-Rowe, who uh, dictated play and really controlled the midfield um, in the attacking um, third for Fulham and you know really caused us some problems. So that sort of link-up play culminated in West Ham uh, going, going a goal behind them. Fulham deserved uh, the lead going into half-time, and everyone was like, right, what's he going to do now? And to Lopetegui's credit, he changed it. He took the two worst players on the pitch off in Antonio and Suchek, and he put on some of it on Paqueta. Exactly what I would have done. Changed the system, moved a couple of players around, uh, and we looked better, which was a huge, huge positive. And also another thing for that first half is when we did get the ball and looked to go forward, it was it was spineless, it was toothless, it was pointless, effectively, because we were just lumping, trying to lump it up to Antonio or Bowen, uh, and Antonio was just, just, you know, it wasn't working. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He was out on the wing when he should have been in the middle. He was getting frustrated because he wasn't being fed the ball. Uh, uh, and overall, it wasn't his best 45 minutes in Claret and Blue and Suchek. We know what he's like, unfortunately. He will score the odd goal, but uh, he's not good enough on the ball. His passing is dreadful. Uh, and that uh, was, you know, evident again yesterday. And... He changed it. Somerville brought some energy and attacking flair to the game, gave their fullback something to think about, which was nice uh, to see. And then all of a sudden, when Danny Ings came on, we had Ings, Bowen, Kudus, Somerville and Paqueta all on the pitch. That wouldn't have happened last season. We, um, you know, that attacking intent would have wouldn't have been conveyed, uh, and we probably wouldn't have had that moment to really go on um, and cause Fulham some problems as we did. And that late barrage was probably a direct result of how many attacking players we have, we had on the pitch, uh, and it balanced it out really nicely and we caused them some problems and in the end they folded uh, and it was a really really good goal you know everything I've criticized our throw-ins because I think they're really poor but it was good awareness from Bowen to get the ball to Sufa for Sufa to throw it to him quickly uh, and their defenders were sleeping they were napping they didn't have a clue what was going on and for Bowen to keep that in I was I was about two meters to the left of it and in row B and I thought it had gone out 
and you know the lino didn't give it and then when Ings put it in for half a second I went they're going to disallow this because it went out but then I went sod it and celebrated like a madman I was on match the day you could just see my phone as I'm filming and my head bobbing up and down uh on some of the uh, videos on match of the day but I mean, it was a brilliant moment. Uh, it was absolutely a brilliant moment. And it was a result of um, the changes that Lopetegui made, acknowledged the mistakes, acknowledged how poor we were uh, and acted upon it whilst we were still in the game. Now, look, Fulham could have scored three or four yesterday. They had some really good chances, free headers from crosses uh, and, and other just general chances. So if we'd have come up against a better team yesterday, then they'd have put three or four past us. But again, we say this week in, week out, it wasn't. And that's not what happened. And let's talk about the reality and what actually happened and we were there we weren't at our best yesterday not anywhere near it we were awful but we got a point uh we played poorly and we got a point and look many fans would have taken a point going into this game away at fulham and i think it's a bit of a mentality thing with the fan base as well because we've played palace uh and fulham away now last season that was a 10-2 defeat on aggregate we lost 5-0 away at Fulham. We lost 5-2 away at Palace. So to turn it from 10-2 on aggregate to, what was it, you know, 3-1 uh, in the end, that's, you know, that's good for our mindset as well. And a win and a draw out of those two games where we were annihilated and embarrassed last season. Again, it's another positive to build on. But... If we're being honest, and we have to be, we weren't good enough. And for the vast majority of it, uh, our passing was too slow. We were too pedestrian. We didn't have any attacking sort of um, penetration going forward. Kudas tried, but didn't, it didn't really come off for him yesterday. And he got frustrated and wasn't tracking back as much as he um, you know, has done in games before. And, uh, and they did do a job on us for a good hour of the game in total Fulham. They were they were really quite impressive. and uh, and. Yeah, but we got a point. We nicked a point. It was a bit of a robbery. Uh, but if you put the attacking players on the pitch, then uh, in the end, if you put a goal scorer on the pitch like Danny Ings, then he will, in the end, score a goal. And of course, that reopens the debate of Danny Ings again. We were all calling for him to be, um, you know, to be sold, to leave the club. He's a burden on the wage bill, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And to be fair, I was part of that. But that then again has proved, and Lopetegui said he's an important player. He, you know, and Bowen said it's a long season. Ings will get game time, and again now it's reopened the debate of should we be using Ings more often? He's a goal scorer. Should he be used in a two up top? Should that be the implementation from Lopetegui going forward? If we're struggling in a game, uh, or if we're looking for, um, you know. If we haven't quite got it in the final third, if you give the ball to Ings in the box, he will put it away. He's a poacher. He's a natural goal scorer. He's done it for years in the Premier League. And he did that yesterday. It wasn't great keeping from Leno. Leno, I'll give him that. But he put it as far in the corner as he could have done. Uh, and it went in the back of the net. And it really meant something to him. I was stood an arm's length away from him, effectively, Dan Ings. And he was really giving it. There was some passion from him, from Bowen, from Kilman, from Mavropanos. They were really relieved and pumped up to get that point. And the fans were absolutely brilliant yesterday. That's one thing I will say. Um, off the pitch in terms of the fans, brilliant. Uh, a fan Fantastic protest for the um, Save Our Concessions campaign, loads of black balloons before kickoff and at kickoff, which were uh, had to be uh, eradicated by the groundsman, which was rather amusing to see him go on and like <laughs> um, get rid of them. But yeah, fans were amazing, especially for that second half when you know, first half where we weren't good at all. Kept singing, kept getting behind them. Uh, the uh, the Fulham fans in hospitality to our left were a little bit bemused at what we were doing, you know, singing actually, uh, making an atmosphere, and um, we were brilliant. And then at, at the end, to be rewarded like that, fantastic bodies everywhere. Check out the vlog if you haven't already. Limbs, a lot of people on the floor, a lot of people probably with a few bruises and a bit achy this morning, waking up um, after the carnage and chaos in that away end yesterday. Uh, but that's always nice. You can't beat a last minute goal that affects and impacts a game, whether it's an equaliser or a winger I just love it there's no better feeling that's probably why I'm a little bit more upbeat uh, than I definitely would have been if we had lost that game 1-0 there would have been a little bit more um, frustration and ranting tone to this but I can see where this is going I'm really positive about it uh, I'm a bit more positive than most I think and uh, and I think that sort of led through to the fan base yesterday it was a really good and vibrant atmosphere throughout the game and I think that's because the fans can see where we're going and there's got a bit of energy back in the fan base you know uh, if we'd have been 1-0 down in the Moyes last season it would have been really flat but no we were getting behind them because we knew uh, and we know that this is going to work and hopefully um 
Lopetegui is going to find his best team over the next few weeks and stick with it, especially in midfield. He got it wrong yesterday, completely wrong. And I think he acknowledged that by changing it pretty quickly. He was really angry and animated, especially in that first half when things weren't going right. He was jumping up and down, shouting, throwing his arms, Lopetegui. Um, it means something to him. He changed it uh, and he got us a point. Well, Danny Ings got us a point. So I'm happy about that. We've got Chelsea up next at home. Anything could happen there. They could be crap. They could be brilliant. Uh, but yeah, we've had a pretty tough first few games. Not many people will say that, you know, to go Villa, Champions League team, Palace, who beat us last season and, you know, albeit haven't been great this season, but um, well, fantastic towards the back end of last season. Man City, you know, nothing needs to be said there. Fulham, a difficult team to go to away from home. Then we've got Chelsea uh, and then Brentford and Ipswich follow. So on paper, two games that potentially could be perceived as a little bit easier. So look, I can see the light, light at the end of the tunnel. I can see uh, us improving, uh, but Lopetegui just needs to make a couple of subtle, subtle changes. Uh, he needs to get that midfield balance right. And it unfortunately doesn't involve Thomas Suchek anymore. I hope Emerson's not out for too long. It didn't look great. He tried to run it off but he couldn't. So, uh, look, we've got a compromise with wan going to the other side and Soufal coming in at right back, which prevents us having to put Creswell on. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully Emerson is now for too long. That's a bit of a concern. Not a good performance, not fantastic, but we got a point. That's the caveat. All thanks to Danny Ings. It papers over some cracks, and I think I've, um, you know, tried to uh, tried to articulate those cracks in this video and uh, and how poor we were, and uh, and the changes that have to be made and were made uh, to make us a little bit better. And look, we will be better, and hopefully uh, that improvement starts now. Rome wasn't built in a day, and hopefully uh, for Lopetegui, things can only get better. From me, come on your irons, and I will see you soon right here on West Ham Official. Put your thoughts into the comment section down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Your thoughts on yesterday's game? Uh, I'll be intrigued to read them. Check out the vlog and all our other videos on the channel, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.